everybody. This is Anna Fine. Uh, I'm here today with my guest speaker and my, one of my preferred lenders, Gary Tsang from FIDA Funds. And we are excited to talk to you about financing your dream home, uh, everything related to mortgages and how to get pre-approved. So, hey, Gary, thank you hey. for being with me. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Hannah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, uh... <laughs> well, I mean, it's great to be here. Uh, you know, I um, really enjoy working with you. And I think um, uh, mortgages and also brokers um, kind of work hand in hand. It's a lot of, you know, moving pieces. And a lot of times uh, people have a lot of questions. It's regarding, you know, what's the rates, how it's going up or down sideways. Um, so, yeah, I mean, glad to be here. Absolutely. Yeah, we cannot work uh, without each other. That's true. And uh, in general, a real estate transaction is a teamwork. Um, a lot of times people don't realize that there's so many people involved uh, on the back end of it. Uh, there's at least uh, probably seven to eight professionals yep. uh, involved um, when you're just trying to buy a house. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so this is kind of be behind the scene. But today I just want to concentrate on mortgages because uh, you kind of like the first person almost, either realtor or mortgage broker, the first people to even start that conversation. And sometimes mm -hmm. you're the person to show people that their dream can become a reality. And we had that example not long ago with a client that thought it's not going to be possible for them. Mm -hmm. And after having conversation with you, they were so blown, you know, mind blown that it's possible. So yeah. let's dive into it. So yeah. I just want to start from the beginning because a lot of our listeners and viewers don't know anything where even to begin. Mm -hmm. So we're going to start from the very basic. So you just having a thought you want to buy a house one day. Mm -hmm. So when is the right time to start talking to a mortgage broker or a lender mm -hmm. uh, and getting your finances in order, so to speak? No, oh, absolutely. Yeah, so most of the time, um, I mean, either... You know, uh, I got a call from Anna. I was like, hey, you know, so-and-so looking for a house or somebody is interested in looking to purchase a property. Um, the first thing I think, you know, besides a buyer kind of presentation that you usually do is to talk to somebody um, like a financial uh, person, uh, either a wholesale lender or you will walk into a bank and talk to a banker. Uh, but that conversation should be early, right? Because it's not only you know, oh, finding out how much you can afford or, you know, how big of a house you can buy or what's the rate or the down payment. But it's really interesting, you know, to have a conversation about what you really want to do, right? Um, you know, do you want to stay in this house for five years, 10 years? It's kind of like the continuation of the buyer's mm -hmm. uh, interview that you yeah. usually do, right? Um, exactly. Yeah, because that would determine how much do you want to put down as a down payment? Or how much do you, you know, how long a mortgage would you need? Should I get an adjustable mortgage for five years or should I get a 30-year fix? Um, so, and then how much, you know, are you paying for rent? Or are you even renting? Are you living with your parents, right? So a lot of this mm -hmm. should start early uh, so that you have some kind of idea, um, mm -hmm. you know, how much the monthly payment is going to be if it, you get approved. Is this something you can afford or is it even something mm -hmm. that you think is the right time? So, yeah, um, you know, a lot of these should start early. Mm -hmm. So basically, um, what I'm hearing you saying, it's never too early to start mm -hmm. the conversation. That's Even right. if uh, you think that, oh, I'm, got, I'm so not ready, I don't have the money, it's yeah. not for me, you still should talk to mortgage broker because you never know what you're going to find out. And, mm -hmm. and this conversation with you sometimes surprises people and they all of a sudden see the light and they, yeah. oh my That's God, right. I actually yeah. can buy. Yeah. So... Um, so that, you know, that's, I kind of view it as, you know, my background as a nurse, it's like triaging, you know, when you Absolutely. get into emergency room, yeah. you, you know, or if you think, you, you know, you have some health issue, you don't go straight to the operating room, right? You mm -hmm. go through the process of getting first understanding what's the problem mm -hmm. and how we're going to fix it. Yep. So that's, and I highly recommend to everyone, even if you don't think it's for you, talk to mortgage broker. It doesn't yeah. matter if we're talking about primary residence, buying second home or investment. Yeah. If you have this thought in your mind, like for me, this was a situation where I wanted to buy investment property and I thought I was not able to mm -hmm. until I spoke to mortgage broker. And I, yeah. you know, when we laid down all the numbers 
what I actually need and, you know, what I can get in the mortgage, mm-hmm. then all of a sudden I, it was very clear. So yeah. to get clarity, talk to mortgage broker early on. Doesn't matter if you're not ready to buy. This is the good time, actually, because you're going to have more time to lay the foundation, mm-hmm. maybe to build your credit, maybe to build your finance, maybe to move some money around from different mm-hmm. accounts or even different country or whatever, right? Yeah. So, yeah. all right. So yep. we cleared that. Never too early to talk to a mortgage broker. And yep. to find the best mortgage broker, go to your agent and ask who they have a relationship with because mm-hmm. it's already, you know, by experience, trusted and tested relationship. Like me and Gary, we've worked together for a long time. Mm-hmm. And I, when I recommend someone, I already know how it, it is to work with them. Don't go online yeah. to a random person that you have no idea who they are. Yeah. Go to people who've been trusted and tested and know what they're doing. So my next question is, um, could you explain the difference between being pre-qualified, being pre-approved, or being fully underwritten, so to speak, or verified? Sure. Yeah. So there are three kind of levels, right? I mean, you got the pre-qualifications, right? Basically, it's like, oh, okay, you go into a bank or, you know, you see a, a mortgage person right i mean believe it or not a lot of people actually if they are registered they have an nmls number right you walk into a bank they haven't really taken the exam like a mortgage broker did um you know to get licensed uh, so they have all the knowledge and experience uh mm-hmm. to fully understand what means qualified or you know pre-approval and things like that so somebody looking at your pay stop oh you know you're good for a million dollars Um, without Mm -hmm. checking credit or things like that, I mean, and then send it in for underwriter. So that initial looking at the piece of paper and then to say, okay, I think you're pre-qualified for a certain amount of money. So that's kind of like the lowest level of, okay, uh, I think you're good enough. Mm -hmm. And then the second level is um, then you get like a pre-approval. Pre-approval may be like, hey, so now you are a little bit warmer, you want to proceed to the next step, then we get a little bit what we call a mortgage blood check, right? Because mm-hmm. just by looking at you, I don't know if you qualify or not, or who you, you know, what your background is. So we, we pull, yeah. get a credit of your credit, you know, get a copy of your credit reports, mm-hmm. see what kind of expenses you have, see what's your credit score, if you have any bankruptcies, have you got any short sale? So that kind of thing, then you usually get a pre-approval from your, um, from your lender or your bank saying, okay, so-and-so is pre-approved for a certain amount of numbers, right? That's the next further level. And then the verified approval, which uh, some wholesale lenders uh, are starting to do, is we get everything as if you're applying, you know, you're in contract, minus Mm -hmm. the property itself, right? So Mm -hmm. they will see that, okay, you got the 60 days of your down payments, they got, you got all your jobs, your two-year work history, um, you have the right identifications. We got your mm-hmm. CIAs together, which is your credit, identity, and assets. Everything checks out. Then they give you a piece of paper. Hey, you know what? You're good at cash. We give you a verified approval for a certain amount of purchase price, a certain amount of um, uh, loan amount. As long as the property itself checks out, then mm-hmm. we can close as soon as 14 days. So those are the different levels of pre-approvals, I would say. Got it. Thank you so mm-hmm. much. So. Yeah. Basically, when uh, you know people say you are pre-qualified, doesn't really mean much. And well, it doesn't really, really mean much, yeah. Nowadays, yeah, yeah. you can't really go buy a house with just yeah. being pre-qualified. Uh, and on yeah. my end, as a realtor, I can add to that that if you submit an offer in the current market, as we are in Bay Area, which is primarily mm-hmm. most of the time we are in the seller market, uh, mm-hmm. submitting an offer with pre-qualification. Uh, yeah. will not look good f- uh, for the buyer. You know, yeah, if it's, you're it's, competing, uh, it's not strong enough. It's yep. not, you know, reliable. Yeah. It's um, as good because, as you get a piece of letter in the mail saying you're pre-approved exactly, for credit card. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mm-hmm. just, uh, you know, exactly. Like you said, I, by looking at you, I can't tell you, you know, what's yeah. wrong with you or what you need. Absolutely. So um, one moment I wanted also to kind of uh, emphasize just because I went through this with several of my clients and mm-hmm. we live in the Bay Area where a lot of people uh, from different countries come in here for work or, uh, you know, b- business or whatever. Uh, it's very important to declare what kind of visa or status you have because right. it can make a big difference 
in um, the type of loan or interest rate you're going to get. And mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that you have to be citizen. You don't have to be citizen to get a loan. Mm -hmm. You don't even have to be a resident. You can be on a work visa. But it's super important to declare it to your lender and also to check when your visa expires. Because a yeah. lot of lenders will also, you know, they will they want to have some buffer that you're not going to get a loan and tomorrow your visa expires. They want to know that Correct. your visa is still has some, uh, you know, time on it before, uh, like even after the transaction close. So your lender really mm -hmm. needs to know everything and it's super important. And that takes time, guys. So that's mm -hmm. why start early, get it all ready, and then we're going to mm -hmm. go see houses, right? Correct. So that's the, yeah, the correct yeah. order of things. All right. So yeah. now I'm looking at my cheat sheet here. Um, another <laughs> question. What are some potential challenges home buyers facing during mortgage approval process? And I just mm -hmm. covered one of them regarding visa, but what mm -hmm. other things can happen during that pre-approval process? Sure. So again, I mean, there's three things um, in my perspective, the CIA, right? So like credit, you know, so if we pull a credit, right, even if we just do a soft pull, you know, it give me a score. It's, it can tell us a lot about, you know, where do we fall within the rates and programs and qualifications, right? Like, are we at the conforming A papers or are we at the lower spectrum of the FHA program? Um, I mean, it doesn't mean the end of the day, but, you know, there are certain things for certain type of buyers and 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 it's kind mm -hmm. of depending on which steps of your life you're in. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, that's credit to see the I is the identity. Like you said, you know, are you a U.S. citizen, a permanent residence, asylum seeker, uh, non-documented? I mean, believe it or not, there's a lot of people who are undocumented is even getting mortgages. There are people that you can wow. buy houses, have, even I without a social security number. Right. So, <laughs> I mean, as long as they can sign in the U.S., you can buy a house if you have credit and you have assets. So the last that, item wow. right, is assets, mm -hmm. right? So the assets is, you know, down payments. Or if you, you know, if you have down payments and then your job, right? And then, um, or you have no jobs, but you have a lot of assets. Oh, you know, I got half a million or a million, a few million dollars sitting in my bank accounts, but I still want to get a loan. There are programs for that, right? So mm -hmm. again, once we figure out the CIA, those are in orders, then good to go. But if not, if one of them needs work, right? Credit, identity, maybe you're applying for something or you're trying to get, you're getting your PR and maybe you should wait six months, sure. Or maybe mm -hmm. the assets, right? You just find, like you said, you know, you're moving money from one country to another, you're waiting for an inheritance, or you just, you know, what we call the house rich, but cash poor, right? So there mm -hmm. are things we can do to get money out so that you can buy, you know, uh, your next property. So those are the CIAs. Got it. But, mm -hmm. you know, potentially this is kind of like a very broad question. What can yep. go wrong? Many things can go wrong. Yeah. You know, sometimes you, you we can even predict because yep. every time it's something new that never happened before. Mm -hmm. And yep. that's again brings us back to start early, start this process with uh, working with your mortgage broker before you even go see open houses. Correct. Yep. Yeah. Because, you know, we never know. Um, another example I want to bring, some people think, oh, I don't have W-2 if I'm a, like I'm a self-employed, mm -hmm. right? I'm a self-employed individual, so I can't get mortgage. Yep. Well, again, especially for people who are self-employed, you need to think about it early on because if you have some small business that take a lot of cash, for example, mm -hmm. and it doesn't go through your uh, accounts and you show low income, then guess what? you're not going to qualify. Right. So yep. maybe if you start thinking about it a year in advance and you talk to a mortgage broker like Gary, mm -hmm. Do some we tax can planning. prepare yeah. you for that. Mm -hmm. Then, exactly, then you can start planning for that and you can start paying yourself more. Mm -hmm. So in a year, you can qualify for a mortgage. Yeah. So it's never too early. And the best thing to avoid those going wrong scenarios and to avoid it, we need to start working early on and you need to be really upfront and, you know, tell us everything the way it mm -hmm. is so we can yep. have clear picture and we can avoid any issues once we actually found the property of your dreams. And from there on, we can sail smoothly. Yeah. So, okay. So best, uh, best therapy is uh, prevention, basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I even have a just recent case, right? I have one client, um, they are short a little bit of down payments to go over the debt to income ratio. 
right? And then I asked him, say, hey, you know what? Do you have any, I mean, I should have asked him early, but then, you know, just talking to them and, and things like that, they never mentioned to me an IRA account, right? Because, mm. um, uh, I mean, for whatever reason, right? And then they say, oh yeah, you know, I got like 150,000 in my IRA account. I said, well, you know, you can borrow up to 50,000 uh, 50, or 50% of your yeah. IRA account yeah. uh, as a down payment. I mean, as whatever you want, basically, right? Right, uh, right. With, which will not affect your debt to income ratio. Right, mm -hmm. because you're basically borrowing against your own money. From yourself. So, yeah. And is it correct, uh, if I'm not mistaken, when you're borrowing from 401k for your f primary residence, you don't pay penalty? Um, not borrowing. The first $10,000 oh. that you only first time uh -huh. home, like first time home buyers, if this is like a one time thing, you mm -hmm. are free to take out $10,000 per person per lifetime. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, which is oh, not tax free, so, yeah. but penalty free. Penalty free. Yes, mm -hmm. penalty free. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's also something that, you know, talking to a mortgage broker early yeah. on, you can find out and you can realize that you actually might have money for down payment. That's right. Yep. Mm -hmm. So there is so many things that what the thing is, we need to know. And uh, that's why once you start working, you need to really trust people that you're working on with uh and you need to trust that they know what they're doing and that they yeah. have best interest we're on your side. for you yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah because a lot of times you know when people just not it's not custom to talk about money and mm -hmm. to be open about Absolutely. what accounts i have yeah. what savings i have what yeah. assets I, or if i'm like you know taking cash for my business and not showing yeah. Just remember, guys, we're not IRS, and our goal is not to catch right. you. We want to help you. Mm -hmm. We want to help you with, with you know, legal way to mm -hmm. get you the home that you want. And, you know, we want to show you different opportunities. Correct. Which leads yeah. me to the next question. How do buyer know which mortgage product is the right one for them? What type of a loan they should take? Yeah. Especially lately, we heard about this California dream for all program everybody jumped on it mm -hmm. it you know it kind of like went away in this, like a week so was that for everyone what kind of programs people need to consider sure yeah i mean this is basically like a whole pandora box of things but i can tell you um i mean just on the basic onset for audience i mean there are uh you know three or four major buckets, right? So you got your qualified mortgages, you know, you got your Fannie, Freddie, you got your mm -hmm. VA and the FHAs, right? Um, you know, they are for certain kind of people. So of course, you know, the Fannie, Freddie, you got the conforming loans, right? Mostly- Sorry, people don't know what's down. Fannie, Freddie. You need to clarify oh, what's okay. Fannie, Freddie. <laughs> yeah, it's so not, Fannie- It's and... not Gary's friends. <laughs> no, it's not my friends. <laughs> yeah, so Fannie- Fannie and Freddie are the government agency that guarantees the loan um, against the, the default, right? So these are government agencies that would, you know, issues and insurance policies against the, the mortgages in case of default so that banks would have the guts, in a sense, mm -hmm. to lend money to consumers, right, against defaults. Mm -hmm. um, so these are government, quasi-government agency, although they kind of operate separately, uh, they have lending guidelines that the lender has to follow, which means the the banks or wholesale lenders, mm -hmm. depending where the money is coming from. Mm -hmm. um, so usually fit in the box, we call a conforming loan. It's still 20% down payment, 30-year fix, mm -hmm. right? That's only one product. And then there's other ones which is doesn't fit into the box. Then, you know, for, for conventional, you can put as little as 3% down, right? For FHA, you can put as little as 3.5% down. Um, so those are the ones that the government would, would back, right? So they, mm -hmm. they insured those loans against default. So th those are called qualified mortgages, right? Okay. And then and those are usually for W-2 employees uh, or some self-employed individuals, but they are a little bit harder to qualify for self-employed because um, their, their qualifications it's really based on the tax returns. And then a lot of self-employed mm -hmm. people take a lot of deductions and expenses. So you're basically mm -hmm. left with a little bit close to nothing or even negative income. Um, mm -hmm. So, but most of the time, like I said, is for those W2 employee employees and, 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 and uh, those kind of uh, individuals. Yeah. Ball. Yeah. And then you have the so non-qualified. Most, most yeah. regular, so regular banks, like let's mm -hmm. say Bank of America, Chase, yep. Wells Fargo, they are Freddie and Fannie. Only, only. Only. Yep. 
Fannie Freddie, VA, right? The Veterans Affairs Office, they also do VA yeah. loans and FHAs. Yeah, correct. Yep, mm -hmm. they don't do any what we call the non-qualified, right? The non-qualified loans, we will call the non-QMs for short, um, are those uh, private investors, right? I mean, they still follow the Fannie Freddie guidelines, but they are not backed by the government, right? Mm -hmm. They are mm -hmm. backed by either a third party or just basically they take a more risk for a higher rewards, which means a high interest rate, right? Um, what Obviously, those, yeah. You know, yeah. So a lot of, they have a lot of different programs, right? Like mm -hmm. bank statement programs. So let's say if you're self-employed, but you don't want to show your tax return, they can just use your bank statements either 12 or 24 mm -hmm. months to get a total sum of how much you actually deposit into your bank account for your mm -hmm. business, right? And then use that as your income, right? So that's a bank statement program. And then they okay. have a verification of employment program, basically a form for your employer to fill out and then say, hey, does so-and-so work at a certain place for two, more than two years and how much do they make, right? So that is that. And then and then there are other ones like the non-documented program, like what we call the foreign investment program or foreign mm -hmm. national program. They don't have a social security number, but they have some down payments mm -hmm. um, or, or those uh, that, let's say, um, they just got out of a foreclosure or just got out of a, um, a bankruptcy. So those mm -hmm. are the ones for the non-qualified individuals, right? Um, okay. It doesn't mean the pro person doesn't qualify. It doesn't mean, it just means that it's not qualified for Fannie and Freddie. Yeah. Okay. So, so the main two my, then, my yeah. question mm -hmm. is then, let's say a person got, you know, they were not qualified for Fannie and Freddie. They got sure. a non-conforming loan. Uh, they purchased property. They pay in their mortgage. Everything great. Can they potentially refinance to a conforming loan in the future? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We Even if their employment the yeah. situation is the same, mm -hmm. but now, sure. you know, based on the property, basically leveraging the property, yeah, it's possible, right? And they can Absolutely. get better interest rate. Absolutely. So just get your foot in the door, basically, right? Yeah. And also a good thing about that is um, there is for primary residents. So a lot of people mm -hmm. are buying the, the primary residence. I say you've got a lawyer makes, you know, half a million dollars, but he doesn't make a paycheck then most of the time he will get a bank statement program. And then mm -hmm. the good thing about that is, you know, he can refinance that into a qualified mortgage. I don't know why he would, but, um, you know, anytime. Or on the, on the other side of the spectrum, right? Mm -hmm. Let's say you have a, a, a lot of these gig workers, right? You could be mm -hmm. driving, one person could be driving for DoorDash uh, at, mm -hmm. uh, at night, and then they have a, mm -hmm. you know, a couple other jobs. So to count his DoorDash income, he may need to go into a non-qualified, right? Um, mm -hmm. and then, so let's say they get in, you know, with 10% down, right. And then, you know, a little bit later, they, they got a full-time job, W2 income works, everything else they can mm -hmm. refinance. And because it's their primary residence, there is never a prepayment penalty. Never. Got it. That's good mm -hmm. to know. I, I actually yeah. learned this. I never, I never heard that. So it's great information for me too. So, and so now I want to kind of uh, get to our last question for today's session, since we, mm -hmm. you know, pretty much everyone who remotely cares or in, has interest in the real estate market knows that interest rates are high, which affecting not mm -hmm. only real estate, it affects every type of loan, it affects our economy. Mm -hmm. uh, so the question is, what do you recommend? Um, how... What what strategy to take with those fluctuating rates right now? Mm -hmm. What is the best approach? Thirty year fixed yeah. or or you know uh, what you call it adjustable, adjustable rate, rate or not to arms, buy at yeah. all? You know people say oh rate is too high I'm not gonna buy yeah. so what do you recommend? Yeah so I mean back to very beginning of the video right like you know the buy or rent situation is more like. I don't want to say a lifestyle, but it's kind of like a, a, a life progression kind of things, a needs assessment, right? Yeah. I mean, if, you know, I always, if you can afford it, think about, I will lean more towards the buying side because you mm -hmm. have total control over what you're going to do with that property, right? Mm -hmm. Versus renting, if you're renting, I can only see rents going up. I mean, I never seen rents go down. Oh, you know Absolutely. what, uh, Anna, since you're paying your rent on time, I'm going to drop it 10%. <laughs> you know, exactly. that's never going to happen. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, I, and the thing is that people don't realize they're telling me, oh, rate is, you know, six and a half. It's too high. I'm going to mm -hmm. keep renting. Yeah. Well, the simple truth is that when you're renting, your rate is 100%. Well, yeah, because that's the 100% right. of that. your payment, yeah, yeah. yeah 
is is your you know your payment you just basically pay in interest that's Correct. it yeah. and you have more zero than that because for rent you don't get a deduction yeah you don't exactly. get exactly no exactly no mm -hmm. deduction no equity growth Mm -hmm. uh, you no know, control of your property mm -hmm. basically uh, you kind of and and then yes no it's never gonna go down yeah correct so, uh, yeah so so what is in today's market let's say someone who does want to buy we don't we're not convincing anyone because everybody is a different stage sure. of their life yeah if uh, people do want to buy what do you recommend right now what are the most common uh, mortgages you issuing right now uh, mm -hmm. in terms of you know structuring and the interest rates and yeah. Uh, yeah, buying so points, with the, with not buying market, points. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with the market right now, um, it, it believe it or not, bef you know, during pandemic, there was a lot of, uh, I mean, of course, a lot of refis, right, because the rate was low. Um, but also at that time, there was a lot of like non-QM, the non-qualified mortgage, because oh, wow. there people are working on gigs, right, because there's mm -hmm. so much things to do at home, right, or do you being a YouTuber or whatever, like you can yeah. make, make a lot of money that way. But now you know, since things are going back to normal, we are seeing a lot of conventional, right? So mm -hmm. we have people coming in with five, 10, 20, 50% down payments. And like you said, trying to chase the rate and trying to chase the property, right? Mm -hmm. So we're seeing a lot of that. And then, like you said, the third thing is kind of the cow heifer, right? The down payment assistance program. There are so many of these out there. You got the Chenoa, you have the California one from cow heifer, the dream for all, which will come and go in a week. And then even cow heifer, they got like five other different programs, like the zip program and the, you know, mm -hmm. the, the my home and all that. But at the end of the day, right? Like if you can afford, you know, your own home, you can, you know, pay for it, everything, the numbers works out. I'm not saying that you should stretch it, you know, by by doing this, doing all this stuff to make it work. Yeah, yeah, but be reasonable. If you can afford it, it's never, I mean, probably not a regret to buy the house, even yeah. though, you know, the rates, I mean, six and, you know, right now we're seeing like, you know, six and three quarters, right? I don't mm -hmm. even think that was high because when I bought my house, it was close to eight and a half percent. So, I mean, it doesn't mean there wasn't any offers, yeah. right? I still have to chase exactly. the houses before I can buy it. Exactly. But, that, yeah, that's so. the, um, that's what a lot of people don't realize uh, because a lot of buyers or just people who meet me on the street or ask me about how's the market, they expect to hear, oh, it's bad, it's yep. low, you know, prices yeah. are dropping. Yeah. If Again, if you're remotely connected or following, you will know that market is on fire in the Bay Area. I'm not speaking yeah. nationwide. I'm not even speaking to entire California. I'm speaking to our market here, Santa Clara, San Mateo, Alameda County, mm -hmm. you know, what we call Bay yeah. Area. Yeah. Uh, and we have extreme shortage of inventory, meaning very few homes for sale. Mm -hmm. um, that demand is still high and that drives prices up. So yeah. bottom already happened and now we are on the trajectory going up again. And regardless on the interest rate, we see multiple offers. So there are ways to structure your mortgage, you know, to get your, uh, your in monthly payment a little bit mm -hmm. lower. You can do a variable rate. You can do seven arm. You can, you know, do s different things. Yeah. But the point is it shouldn't stop you from buying again. Yeah. If, you qualify. And yeah, if correct. you can comfortably make those monthly payments, I never yeah. recommend anyone, you know, suffocating themselves just yeah. to buy a house. It's not, yeah. of course, not the solution. Yeah. So thank you, Gary. I oh. want to um, just encourage everyone, please reach out, send me your questions. We will record another uh, session like this. So we might go live so we can allow you to participate and ask questions live. Mm -hmm. But we want this to be educational. We want this to be useful. So please text or email me your questions for next session that we have with Gary. And we will be happy to answer mm -hmm. a few things that we had in mind. And let us know if it's something that you want. We could, you know, have a case that we can kind of uh, show you a hypothetical scenario. Uh, you know, how we, how Gary kind of structures structure Mm -hmm. the the loan and how he presents it to the client to easier to them for them to understand uh, we can also talk more about the current situation with the interest rate economy fed why mm -hmm. they doing what they doing how you should uh, behave how you should capitalize on it right there is a way mm -hmm. to make money right now because That's the right. interest rate is high on both ends on yeah. savings too
Yep. So please send us your questions. We will be happy to answer them. And if you have mortgage related question, Gary is your guy. He's extremely knowledgeable. And uh, I'm here for you for any real estate needs. Uh, reach out. You have my phone number on this screen. And I will also put information for Gary on the bottom under this video. Perfect. Thank you so Thank much, you. Gary. Thank, Thank you. you. It was a pleasure. Yes, absolutely. It was fun. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye-bye.